G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and as you can see I'm back on the deck final throws of preparation happening here for the demolding of this deck. Uh, today I'm just going to basically about to rip out all the peel ply and give it a light sand. I'm going to sand the entire deck in uh, over the next few days and just get it ready so that I have minimal sanding when it's overhead and, uh, and in place over the deck. So the more I can do now, the less I'll have to do over my head and that's really important to me. This week I've decided and I've been deliberating about what I show you and what I don't. I think what you actually see would be around about half a percent of what's going on here on the hulls. And uh, I sort of wonder how much I should give you to watch and how much I shouldn't. I try to edit it, time lapse it in the works. This week I'm basically gonna show you in great detail, just installing one shelf can add a hell of a lot of grief to my, uh, my working day. In fact, I think the other day I spent three hours drilling one hole with a hole saw. I had that many problems. So that's boat building, that's what it's all about. Nothing fits, nothing is exact. Everything has to be modified to fit this hull. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and don't forget to make a comment. I love the comments, I get some great comments, and I really do love to hear that advice coming through. And you know, let me know what you think. Let's get into it. Well, this head frustration uh, is driving me absolutely insane. This particular module is not a great fit. It has been up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, last at least 20 times as I gradually get that blocking closer and closer to a good fit. I think I'm almost there now. Under here where I've been putting in the hatch under the vanity here, um, I've been putting in some shelves and a bulkhead. I've just decided I'm just gonna cut a hole undersized to a particular hatch that I may put in there. I'm not really sure what sort of hatch I'm gonna do, but I've gotta give myself a reasonable size hatch so I can access in behind it to um, ascertain the size of the shelf I need as well as um, start to glass in the back side of this module um, to make sure that the whole thing's going to fit snugly. So I'm going to cut out this. I'm also going to cut out behind the head this access panel here. Just may as well do it right now and then I've got access to the whole thing. There's also another one under the shower unit here. There's one here that needs to be cut out and another one over here in the actual shower. It's very close quarters. I'd rather do it now than do it later. Um, I may as well cut it out and then I've got good access. It's driving me insane. I've been in and out of this bloody head 400 times in the last week and it's starting to really grate on me. so tight I need to relieve it here along the top of this ridge here. Now there's a wooden top that goes on the top of this module once the roofs are in place. But if I just relieve it a little bit it'll make it a lot easier taking it up and down because I'm getting so close. I'm within millimetres of getting this thing perfect.
this whole process has been about getting a vanity shelf in and making sure that it's sufficiently blocked in but getting this thing up and down up and down up and down has really helped me fine tune its fit and uh it's been bloody frustrating to say the least but uh in here i've got a bit of a template for a shelf i've just got to finish it off and then i should be able to cut a shelf and get it installed Right, I'm going to fill it the shelf in. Um, you've got to get ready because once you're in there, you're in there. You can't come back out. You can have everything you need. I've got spirit level, mask, pen, rag, sandpaper, cushion for my knees, electric screwdriver, uh, my filleting mixture, my cotton flock, gloves, more gloves, catalyst. Uh, oh shit, I haven't got a bloody stirring stick. So you, that's what you got to get ready. <laughs> And then you got to get in through this hole. <laughs> That's no no easy feat. And then I've only just got enough room to get in. I've got to get used to this. <clears throat> just boats. Oh. Oh. Only just fit in. Like I've got my legs down the bloody hole. Oh. Oh. All right. I hope I've got everything because I'm not going out there again. Okay, so I've got to fill up this shelf in, which I've just made. It's a 12 millimeter um, H80 that I had already laminated, so I don't have to glass it. All I've got to do is basically fill it in, glass it in place. So I've got to get it all level, make sure it's in the right spot, and I'm going to laminate it in with two layers of 100 gram surfboard cloth. Doesn't need much more than that. It's got a lot of points of contact, and ultimately it's going to have a lot of holes drilled in it for the three-way valve and the sink waste. And also there'll probably be some, um, yeah, it's also gonna have black water hose and everything come through it. So ultimately about half of the shelf is gonna disappear, but I do need it in here to, uh, to enable us to be able to get in and out, get our hands and store stuff in here. So it's good to leave a bit of a gap in behind this, uh, if you can, like about five mil, just so you can fill it correctly. So this is uh, just a basically a hundred gram surfboard cloth. Very, very fine. Great for doing things like this where you don't need a lot of structure, but you just need something smooth. This is all going to be painted out with probably the flow coat or perhaps paint. Um, very important to use a smaller weave that is not going to show the uh, 
the texture. Right, I'm down in the port shower. I'm actually standing in the uh, in the bilge, but because I'm in the shower in the part that lifts out of the floor here. But I've got to cut out an access panel here. There's actually a hatch that fits here on the seat of the shower, and I'm going to cut out a, a smallish hatch just so I can see how much room I've got in there to mount the uh, water pump and the macerator pump which actually allows for the pump out of my tanks because I don't have gravity feed tanks in this boat. There's just not quite enough room for them. But anyway, I'm going to get into that. Should be fun. So in here we're going to have a water pump and a macerator pump to draw water from the freshwater tank here will be mounted here on the hull side and then uh, also the macerator for pumping out our obviously pumping out our black water tank So the deck is now fully laminated and I started driving a couple of wedges in it the other day and it's starting to release around the doorways, around the flanges, around the hatches, which is a really positive sign for demoulding. Before I can demould it, so much work to be done in here. I mean, ridiculous amount of work to be done in here. I have to get the port side head needs to be put in place. It needs to be uh, physically blocked and glued in. Up in the, uh, in the bow here, I have the trash bulkhead, which is still unsealed. It hasn't been closed off, so I'm gonna work on that today. If I can get that closed off, I've got yet another bulkhead to put up in the front there, which is actually gonna serve us as a forward locker at the front of each of the bows, right on top of the trash bulkheads. The starboard head, it needs to come in and out a few times to make sure I've got the blocking. I've already started to cut out the holes in the floor or the access for the plumbing. So there's so much going on. The anchor locker needs to have the platform in there to mount the windlass. Uh, very, very important. And that's gonna be around about 25 mil plywood with about 50 layers of glass on it, I'll imagine. I don't want that springing that you get in, uh, in, in windlass lockers that aren't quite secure enough. I don't want to have that problem going forward. Now once that deck gets demolded, it's going to be hovered above here and float around about 50 centimetres higher than the gunnel here for quite some time while I start to work out my bulkhead shapes so that ultimately I'm going to go up, down, up, down, up, down with that deck. And how I'm going to do that is with a number of car jacks, Acra props, you name it, whatever I can do to make that easier. I need to be able to lift that up and down myself. It only weighs around about a ton, maybe 1.1, 1.1 tons. Um, it's not ridiculously heavy, but it still needs to be done. Also, the main central bulkhead. This big guy here, now I lost the footage of me laminating that. That's a layer of 600 double bias on each side of 25 mil Australian hardwood marine ply. That is probably the best, possibly the best wood I can buy. That's a $500 sheet 
of top end marine ply. It is totally void free, and how I know that is I've already cut the bulkhead out. The mast post over here needs to be complete as well. So the mast post needs to be put in place. So this next couple of weeks is basically going to define how quickly I can get that deck out of the mold. Everyone's very excited, I'm very excited to get it out of the mold, but not right now, because if I get it in here and I can't get into these areas, um, I'm gonna be in a lot of strife. So I have a lot of work to do in this hull before I can even contemplate pulling that out. to basically prepare all the surfaces for tabbing. Um, this bulkhead here is 20 mil foam, 300, 600, 300, 600. It's an engineered structure to serve as a main crash bulkhead. And uh, essentially the bulkhead here is the same underneath, but the one that passes here is actually a secondary uh, structural member as well up in the bow. Very, very strong construction. This all is going to have to be sanded and prepared. It is peel plied, so it's just dusty. And I've also got, along with this wing frame here, needs to be um, prepared as well, because I didn't tab this at the time. It's ready to do it. And it was all peel plied, so it just needs a quick sand. Um, underneath here, this simply needs to be epoxied down with Technic glue, with methacrylate, and essentially that'll glue that down, and that's all ready to go. I just need to clean all the crap out of it next. There's a bit of dust and dirt in there from all the months it's been sitting here, and obviously I've had the lid off, but uh, just needs a bit of a clean up. A couple of tools still down in there I've got to get out. Um, there is an access tube that goes into the forward cabin into the build where I can drain the crash bulkhead with a tap on it. So it's all pretty well thought out, I just need to give it a really good clean. amount down here because we've got a bit of a sloping away due to the whole um, shape but I'm gonna basically put in tons of this and hope to God that I get a good seal. Right, a few hours later, this is actually glued down. Now I'm pretty happy with it. I've had a ton of weight on it for probably about three or four hours. It's kicked. That technical glue, I've got a rapid set uh, catalyst on the um, the second part, on the part V for a faster release, which means that it's going to uh, obviously set and kick off a lot earlier. It's still tacky. Now I'm going to actually mix uh, some of this cotton flock and vinyl ester into a filling mixture which is like a glue thickener and I'm going to fill it down each side of the uh, the lid of the crash bulkhead so that I can then tab it later on. The only thing is right up in the bow there, it's, there's a bit of a gap, about a centimetre, so I'm going to have to try to work out some way of blocking that in before I can glass that shut. Uh, it was never going to be an easy fit, it was just simply that complexity of where the foam are uh, meeting on both of the sides of the bow as it goes forward. But for now I'm going to fill this, get it totally full so that when I tab it there's no chance of any water sitting in the gap. I want the radius to give me the ability for water to be able to then pool on the top of here and then fall out through a skin fitting. So I don't know whether you've noticed but there's been a lot of discussion about bulkhead tabbing <laughs> over the internet if you haven't I don't know what planet you're on but I've been pretty meticulous all the way through this build to ensure that my chemistries remain consistent. Um, certainly I have used a lot of polyester in the deck and in the laminating of these glass sheets. There's no point in wasting vinyl ester on these, um, these foam core sheets if they're just going to simply be partitions and cupboards and things like that. But wherever I've 
had structural members. I've actually used vinyl ester, particularly in the main compression bulkhead, the sail bulkhead, and then the forward bulkhead as well. But in here, I've actually got a combination of three chem or two chemistries going on here. I've got polyester on this foam sheet here, uh, adhering to the foam. Underneath, I've glued epoxy and let that tack off. And then I've put in a fillet of vinyl ester and cotton flock, which is actually like a, a glue thickener, which uh, gives a little bit of structure, but it really does provide a solid uh, base for a good fillet. And then I'm using vinyl ester over the top for any tabbing of any bulkhead. I'm not using any uh, polyester in my boat for tabbing of bulkheads other than in the shelves of the petitions. The petitions themselves are being glued on with uh, with polyester and uh, and then basically uh, with vinyl ester tabbing. So I'm remaining within the bounds of the chemistry and providing the uh, the structural strength we needed. Now, vinyl ester is a very well overlooked product in a lot of uh, lot of instances, particularly in the northern hemisphere. I know in the southern hemisphere here we all love it because it has a UV inhibitor in it, so it's already UV stable. But it also is about two thirds of the price of epoxy. Uh, it is a similar uh, product. It is in fact a modified epoxy, which means that it shares the same chemical backbone as epoxy but it's very easy to work with much easier than epoxy and i get a result where it actually goes off within you know a couple of hours i'm ready to basically act upon it again it's epoxy we normally need to leave for around 24 hours for setup um here when i'm putting down the tabbing like this which i've got 600 double bias going down uh two layers for all of my tabbing is in fact two layers of 600 double bias the first one is 200 millimeters wide. Go in place like so. And then the second one will be a 300. So you always put the thinner one down first. There's no uh, deviation to that anywhere that I can find in any boat building instance where you put down the thicker one first or the wider uh, tab first. I think that's actually probably a little bit defeating the object of tabbing. The idea is to overlap the second one, overlap the third one, gradually increasing the, the, the roots of the, uh, of the structure to hold it in place. But uh, I've seen a couple of things where guys have put the, the, the wider tabbing down and then they're getting narrower and narrower. All you're doing is thickening it up and creating a shear point. Uh, with this, I'm actually spreading to there and then to there and then to there. It makes sense as we gradually increase our foothold on the substrates as we increase the bulkhead strength.